What we're going to be going over here are diluted earnings per share for contingent issuance agreements and we're going to issue shares of common stock for attaining a certain market price level. Now Corporation A purchased Corporation B and one of the terms of the merger was that if Corporation B's average common stock market price here exceeded $40 per share here during year 20x2, Corporation A would issue an extra 100,000 additional shares of their common stock to Corporation B's stockholders in year 20x3. Now point one here, Corporation B's average market price price for their common stock was $55 per share here during the year 20x1, which exceeds the goal of $40, $40 per share that was set here for year 20x2. So the question is, what contingent share should be included in Corporation A's earnings per share here in year 20x1? So we're really dealing with three separate years here to determine what contingent shares should be included and we're going to be looking here for year 20x1 to determine what contingent shares we would include. So first off let's go down here and uh, understand what those contingent stock issuance agreements would be here. Now in business combinations the acquirer corporation, in this case it's Corporation A, may promise to issue additional shares to the shareholders of the company being acquired, in this case it's Corporation B, as contingent shares if certain contingents are met and attained. Now contingent stock issue agreements can be based on either the passage of time or the attainment of certain earnings or market price levels. And we're going to be looking at the market price levels in this example. Now, we would include contingent shares as outstanding in the diluted earnings per share here, if one here. The passage of time occurs during the year that was specified, or two here, it meets the earnings or the market price by the end of the year specified, or if it currently is being attained. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this example here. Okay, so let's go up here and look at our example. So again, for our contingent stock issuance agreement, we're going to be looking at Corporation A's diluted earnings per share and how we'd calculate that. Now, let's assume that Corporation B, the company acquired, attained this market price level here in 20x1 as we, met, we, we went through in our example. That was that $55 per share market price versus the $40 per share required here for the year 20x2. So they had to uh, uh, attain this uh, price level here of $40 per share here on their stock in year 20x2, but it was actually attained uh, earlier, one year earlier at $55 per share the market price. So based on Corporation A issuing an additional contingent shares for Corporation B meeting their per share price goal here. So this is what we have to deal with here. The goal was set here for 20x2 but it was met here in the year 20x1 but the common stack shares will not be issued until the year 20, a year until year 20x3 here to the shareholders of Corporation uh, B here. So the question is, should these contingent shares be included in the year 20x1's earnings per share here for Corporation A? Okay, so this is what we have to deal with here. The goal was attained here in year 20x1 here, and it was met at, in that year here. And the goal was set for the year here 20x2 for, for those uh, uh, average uh, market price here and those common, common stocks. But the stock was actually issued here a year later here in year 20x2. X3. Okay, so really our answer is this here. The goal was attained in 20x1 here. It, it was met at that date here. And the rule is here. If you meet the market price by the end of the year or it is currently being attained. In this case, we would have met it here by the end of year 20x2 here, but it was currently being attained here in year 20x1. So because it was currently being attained in year 20x1, that is we would be uh, including those contingent shares here in the in earnings per share here in 20x1 here for Corporation A based on our rule here. Okay, so now let's look at those diluted earnings per share and how they would be affected here by that meeting that market price here and where we'd have to issue those extra contingent shares here, what we call the contingent shares here going to the stockholders here of Corporation B a Corporation A would be issuing those extra shares here. So for our diluted earnings per share, 
we simply have our, our formula here. Net income here for the year divided by the total number of common stock shares outstanding, well, the total average number of common stock shares outstanding plus those contingent shares that would have to be issued here to uh, Corporation uh, B shareholders. Actually, they'd be issued in year 20X3 based on that goal that was set in 20x2 but they would be included in the diluted earnings per share here in year 20x1 okay so our just looking at let's just say for example here our net income was five million dollars here for corporation a for the year and we had 300,000 shares of common stock average number of shares outstanding here then we'd add to it that extra hundred thousand shares here that would be issued to the corporation B's shareholders so you're going to be issued actually in year 20x3 but because they we met that goal ahead of time here and based on our rules we have to include it here in year 20x2's earnings per share now for the following years here years 20x2 and years 20x3 these hundred thousand shares would be outstanding and they would really just become part of the average number of shares outstanding for the next those following years here but for year 20x1 here we have to include them as contingent shares here and ultimately here what we're just doing is we're taking our net income here and dividing it by our total number of shares outstanding the 300,000 average number for a common stock plus those extra hundred thousand for the contingent shares so adding those together dividing them into net income we're going to get our 20 x1 earnings per share here at twelve dollars and fifty cents per share here for corporation a okay so a here we include those contingent common stock shares here in 20x1 uh, if, just to review here the goal was set for 20x2 but they are attained here in 20x1 and based on our rule we'd have to include them here as our in our to calculate our diluted earnings per share okay so just to review here those contingent shares would be included in the 20x1 earnings per share because the price level here is currently being attained here even though the goal was set for year 20x2 here we attained the goal in year 20x1 so we would be including them in the diluted earnings per share based on our rules okay so that's a um, summary of what's going on here when we're talking about those contingent stock uh, issuance agreements and in this case when we talked about those contingent shares those were those extra shares that would be issued to the um, a company being acquired in this case it was Corporation B uh, providing Corporation B met specific goals and the goal was that they'd had to uh, attain a certain uh, average um, uh, market price on their common stock in year 20x2 and based on that we would the the corporation a would be issuing in this case a hundred thousand additional shares here at common stock to corp b's shareholders but the point that we want to go back and look at it again here when we're talking about those contingent shares here just so we understand it here uh, when really looking at when they should be included in the um, in this case we're starting with year 20x1 here the earnings per share here so uh, again our goal was set here for year 20x2 it was attained here in year 20x1 but it was the stocks are actually going you know, to be issued here in 20x3 but based on our rules that we use here because we attain that goal ahead of time here in 20x1 we have to include it in the 20x1's earnings per share which caught which really cause uh, make affects our diluted earnings per share here because had we not included those contingent shares here so that hundred thousand contingent shares wouldn't have been included um, for that for the year here at 20x1 then we'd simply had our net income here of five million dollars divided by the average common stock outstanding here three hundred thousand uh, shares so then our earnings per share here would have been higher so this con these contingent shares that we have to include because the uh, goals were being met here causes a diluted effect here on the earnings per share okay so that goes over our subject here when we're dealing with those contingent shares and when they would have to be included in our earnings per share when we make our calculations